My friends, I know you've been having trouble finding your french fries out there. Everybody from Japan and all around the world, we have seen shortages of all kinds. Today, I'm going to lead with that information. The first thing is the shortages that are going on. We've talked about Japan. We've talked about now Canada. We've looked at the US and so on. It's everywhere. The second thing is up and up. What's happening with inflation? What's going on with commodities and others? The third is where to look. Where should you be looking as an investor? What's going up? And let me give you a little spoiler alert. Gold is starting to look more attractive from the investment perspective. Of course, those who own physical precious metals already know what's up. Let's get into it right away. I wanted to begin by taking a look at this. Fruit and veggie outages in Canada gets worse with trucker shortages. So can't get into it all, but of course, some truckers are being turned away at the U.S. border and U.S. to Canada border. They're not able to get in because Canada put this mandate and some of the truckers are saying, all right, well, I can't make it across then. And that ultimately leaves the customer uh, with the inability to get what they want. So with the availability of certain commodities and products, it's going to mean higher prices. Okay, if you can't get those French fries for that price, well, you're going to have to pay that price. Somebody is going to pay for it. If that means it's 10% higher, 20% higher, or 100% higher, or even more, somebody is going to pay. And you could see right here, I mean, I got to be careful what I say, but certainly we are seeing the shortages. We are hearing from members that they are going into some stores where there's no oranges or bananas. And let me tell you something. If you, <laughs> if you don't give me my bananas, I'm going to make a big stink about it, all right? This is crazy. Has anyone ever heard of anything like this before? You would think that you were living in a country where there are certain different policies, but anyway, I'm not going to go there. Well, you look at one truckload of fresh produce from California or Arizona to Canada is now $9,500 up from an average of 7000 So imagine the difference in price just when you look at the shipping costs. And anybody who has to bring product in from overseas or maybe ship it inside of a particular country, you know what's happening. The prices have certainly increased. You could argue it's contrived or whatever, it doesn't matter. The end consumer is the result of all of this, is is the, you know, has to bear the brunt of all of this. And I think for an individual that's already pushed to the edge, this is a big problem. This is a huge problem, in fact, okay? So I think you get the point. It's not just the U.S.-Canada border. I mean, it's going on within Canada itself. It's going on within the U.S. itself and other countries. Doing laundry is about to get more expensive. Can you believe this? Take a look. It's about to cost you more to wash your clothes, not the electricity. That's one factor. But Procter & Gamble said that it will be raising its prices by an average of 8% on retail customers next month for its Tide & Gain laundry detergent, downy fabric softener, and bounce dryer sheets. So you can choose an alternate company. You could say, okay, well, they're doing that. I'm going to do this. But first of all, number one, you look at a company like Procter & Gamble. They're a conglomerate. They own you know, all these different companies. But you can go to an alternate and what are they going to do? Those other generic store brand companies, they're going to increase to maybe not as much and maybe they will ultimately be cheaper. But in general, everything is moving up. Okay. You can see already the prices are excessively high. We haven't seen this type of increase in prices in um, decades. And so what does that mean? People have less disposable income. If they have less disposable income, what are they going to do long term? How are they going to deal with this? Well, they're going to spend less money 
on going to the restaurants that are closed, spending less money on the movie theaters that people don't go to anymore. And ultimately, there will be less to be spent in general. And so that means less economic growth. How do you offset that? Well, of course, the government tries to do stimulus packages, but you can't do that forever. Traders bet that oil at $100 is a question of when, not if. And this is big because oil is that commodity which we kind of use as a bellwether. We look at oil to say, what direction is the economy going and where has it been? And so you look at that, of course, there is a lot, a lot of, you know, when, when you look at the traders and what they do and the speculation behind it, it's clear. But it just gives you some insight, okay? And you got to ignore the day-to-day -day fluctuations. There's no doubt about that, okay? You could just look at what's happening with oil when Brent specifically getting very close to 90 and then also the WTI surging past 85. The bet that it's going to hit 100 seems to be inevitable. But of course, nothing goes up in a straight line. You could look through this if you're interested, but I want to show you something. How do we counteract what's happening today? How do we go against all of this inflation? Well, the option is to increase interest rates. And it's not just the United States that's talking about it. Well, of course, Canada as well. Scotia sees Bank of Canada hiking rate to 2% to quell inflation. Well, we'll see. Next week will be uh, you know, that meeting in which we will be able to at least get insight. If they're not going to increase at this meeting, perhaps in the next, and we'll see. Interest rates at rock bottom, housing prices at a beyond record high. I mean, it is truly obscene. Just look at what's happening with Canadian price pressures hitting the highest in 1991. This is Canada's CPI. And, you know, just like the U.S. measured in a way that it doesn't really capture all that which is, you know, making it up. But anyway, the point is people are paying higher prices more than ever before. At the same time, you have shortages, and that only makes it worse. What's going on on the financial side of this? Well, we're looking at the S&P. I'll show you the high, with the highlighter here. S&P is a blue line in the background, near a record high. It's off its record, that's for sure, but close to a record high. And then you see the margin debt. Year over year change. What has happened? Well, I think it's very clear that there is a somewhat, I don't want to be, you know, <laughs> there's a deleveraging. I'm trying to be careful with those words, but I think you know what I mean. And this is just another one just showing you that we are repeating the patterns of what we had seen previously. This chart goes back to 98. And what happens when you start to see a deleveraging? Of course, the market does come down. It could come down 20%. It could come down 100%, or I should say 50%. Who wins in this situation? Well, of course, if interest rates are going to increase, if we are going to see inflation taking off, gold could be the one, as well as silver, could be the one to benefit. And you look at gold's price, 1839 at the time of this recording, silver at $24. If I pull this back, I mean, yeah, this is the one year on both. It's been chopping along uh, for gold and silver is, you know, has not performed well. It should be performing much better, but we're talking about the most manipulated assets in the world, bar none. Oil versus profitless tech companies. So just look at the difference right now. There has been this massive chasm in between the two. There is oil, Brent Oil specifically, and these unprofitable tech companies going in the complete opposite direction at this time. So, you know, after the bottom hit in 2020, I don't want to say they were correlated, but, but certainly they were moving somewhat together but that has really really changed as of you know november time frame and i've shown you this multiple times before if you look 
I mean, this is the four broad indexes, S&P 500, Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the Russell, all of them getting towards their, I mean, if I show you this, the Russell's just taking an absolute beating below its 200-day moving average. You look at the NASDAQ nearing its 200-day moving average. And I mean, ultimately, when you see the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 breaking below that 100-day moving average, hitting the bottom mold of your band all across all four of these, I mean, it is just a beatdown to say the least. Now, you could argue it's oversold, but that's besides the point. And then here it just shows you what happened previously. Well, if you look at oil during the period, Brent versus the S&P 2007 to 2008, it was very clear what happened. I mean, there was a period of time in which there was a disconnect in between the two, but as we moved through this second half, of 2008, everything started to fall. So we will see if that is the case again today. I could tell you right now though, US financial conditions are remarkably easy. I do agree with this. You know, that could change. Certainly, we could see a lot of tightening happening, not just with the main Fed funds rate and other central bank Fed funds or Fed funds rate equivalents, but we could see many different types because there's there's a lot of different ways that conditions could be tightened on the opposite end of the spectrum we are seeing china getting looser so they're going in the opposite direction we'll see what happens as a result of that and i just wanted to give you a little insight onto this here you can see us electric new vehicle red registration share by brand now it is very clear that tesla dominates yes absolutely uh, but that's changing. So this is Tesla, as you can see right in here, huge compared to you know Chevy and and others. The expectation, however, over the next few years is that this will shrink down much, much further, sixty six percent in twenty twenty one. And I believe I had read doesn't say on here, but somewhere around that forty five percent range. <clears throat> so looking at this, I would say that long term, it's not necessarily bearish, okay, not bearish, but it just shows you that other companies are hitting the field right now, and they're going to be playing ball, okay, so we have to be careful where our money is, what investments we take on, and remember that what happened in the past doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen in the future, okay? So you can't say, oh, every time this happens, well, then that happens. Well, you got to take that with a grain of salt. I'll leave you with that. If you appreciate the information, simply hit that thumbs up. That's all you got to do to support the channel, right? Just click that one button. It's right down there. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. All right, just click it and I'll see you there.